we're going to now look at how we can work with others with our repository because at the moment it's not particularly useful in that the repository is only on our local machine so if you want to share your changes with others there are several options for doing that um, typically you would set up a git server and the git server software runs in a variety of different ways so for example you can host it under an HTTP server uh, you can host it under SSH if you're running under Unix or Linux but in this case we're going to go with the simplest thing possible which is a mapped network drive. Git doesn't necessarily require any special server software uh, in order to have a Git server you can just literally dump a repository onto a network share. And What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly create a fake network drive. Uh, so what we've got here is a an S drive and I'm just going to delete my demo from earlier and we're just going to pretend that this S drive maps to a network share although in reality it's just on my local machine at the moment so the first thing I'm going to do is going to create a new uh, tab in my command window and I'm going to go into the S drive and what I'm going to do is create something called a bare repository which is an empty git repository which doesn't have the working directory associated with it so in the case of our demo repository we have our git repository and all of the working files checked out on a server we don't need those checked out so we can just create just the repository by itself and we do that with the git init command again for this time we say uh, it's a bare repository and we're going to call it git demo dot git like that so I'm now going to come over to my local repository again and say I want to push all these changes up to uh, the server and what I'm going to say is git remote add and this is going to add a remote repository that our local repository knows about and I'm going to call it origin that's uh, typically the convention when using git the master remote repository is called origin and I'm going to tell it where that that repository lives I'm telling it that origin lives on the S drive in the directory called git demo .git. and there we go it now knows about that origin so we can now say git push origin master so we're going to tell git that we want to push all of the changes in our local repository up to the origin repository and we're telling it we only want to push up our master branch and it uh, whirs away for a moment and then it tells us that it created a new branch master on the origin repository and there's just one other command I'm just going to quickly uh, copy and paste I just need to tell git that our local master branch now maps to the master branch on the server. Okay, so I'm going to create a new tab and we're going to pretend to be a different user coming in. So I'm going to this time clone the remote repository on the server down to a local directory on my machine. So this time rather than using git init I'm going to use the git clone command and I'm going to say git clone and then the path to the repository and where I want to put it and I'm just going to put it in a directory called git demo2 it tells me that it's uh, successfully cloned that and if I go in there and I bring up the repository hist um, repository visualizer we can see we have all those same commits in exactly the same order for our second user in, although those are now two separate repositories uh, so we cloned that remote repository onto our local machine so our two users now have a copy of the repository each Okay, so we're going to come back to our first user who's in a, our git demo directory and we're going to make a change. So let's go back to Visual Studio and let's say actually we don't want it to be called Jeremy's Music Store, we want it to be called my wonderful music store. So we're going to make those changes and we're going to commit those changes renamed the store again and now that I've committed the changes these are committed at the moment only to my local repository once we're happy that we've made those changes and we can make as many commits as we like locally we only push up to the server when we're happy that those changes are what we want to share with the other users so I can just say git push and it now transfers that change up to the server and we can come to our second user and he can do the opposite of a push which is a git pull 
and it tells us it found an extra commit in there and it pulled it down. So if we bring up the repository history there, we can see that commit has now appeared on our second user's repository as well. Okay, so our second user now has all of the changes that the first user made in his local repository. So, there are several ways we can take a look at all the history in our repository. The first way we've already seen a few times, and that's by using the git k command to bring up the repository visualizer, which brings up the GUI tool, which shows us the commits, it also shows us the contents of those commits, and the files that were included in that commit, along with who made it, the time, uh, and things like that. We can also look at that same information from the command line by using the git log command. And that gives us a somewhat uh, verbose um, amount of information on the screen which shows us that exactly the same thing. Um, you can also customize the output of the git log command to show something perhaps a bit more friendly. So for example I've created an alias in git called uh, glog. It shows us a graph log uh, very similar to the output of git k but on the command line and that shows us uh, the short SHA-1 hash, the branches that relate to a particular commit uh, and when those commits happen. So you can see that same information on the command line. You don't have to necessarily pull up the repository visualization tool to see that. And there's other ways of customizing the output of git log as well. Uh, for example, you can say git log pretty uh, equals one line. And that shows us again something very similar. And you can further customize that with aliases like that glog command that I just used.